Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be giving this nightstand a little makeover for fall. I'm gonna be using my new sander and talking to you guys about it and why I purchased it. And I'm also gonna be trying out a new paint to me. This is a fusion mineral paint and it is a lot different from the chalk paints you usually see on my channel here. So if you wanna see how I give this nightstand a little fall makeover, just keep watching. Before we jump into today's video, I've been teasing all week that I have a really big announcement to share with you guys. And today I wanted to let you know that I am launching my first online furniture painting course in collaboration with International Open Academy. I am so excited about this, you guys. I have been filming this course behind the scenes while doing YouTube all summer long, and I'm so excited that I get to share it with you. So check this out. What if I told you you can take the furniture you already have in your home and turn them into one-of-a-kind pieces for your space? Hi, I'm Christina Mascari of Pretty Distressed, and I have been painting and refinishing furniture for the last seven years. In this course, I'll teach you all the foundations you need to take outdated furniture and give it a fresh look with furniture paint. I'll provide you instruction with a step-by-step -step approach. This course is structured to take you from a beginner to envisioning, designing, and creating custom looks for your furniture all on your own. In the course, I will also show you how to flip your furniture makeovers for a profit and how to charge clients for commission pieces, just like I do. I truly believe anyone can use paint and their own creativity to transform furniture into something special. Enroll in this course and let's start making furniture beautiful one piece at a time. How this course is gonna be different from a typical video you see here on my YouTube channel where I take you from start to finish on a project, it's broken down into easy to understand modules. There's five modules and about five videos per module that really focus down on the specifics and basics of furniture painting, whether that's creating a type of style with your paint, picking the right top coat, working with embellishments, selling and picking furniture. It's gonna be broken down into bite-sized chunks that you can go through at your own pace to celebrate the launch of this course and to celebrate my birthday which is next Friday I'm turning 40 I'm only slightly terrified about it International Open Academy is going to be giving you a special introductory launch price of $19 for this course they're going to run that through October 5th and after then it's going to go up to $49 so definitely try to purchase it before the 5th because you're going to get big savings I'm going to leave a link down in the description box below that will take you right to the course I'm really excited about this. I hope you guys enjoy it if you decide to purchase it and I can't wait to hear your feedback. Okay, thank you for staying with me for that big announcement. Let's go ahead and get to today's makeover. This is my piece I'm gonna be working on today. I'm gonna be giving it a little fall makeover. You may recognize it from the Battle of the Top Coats and you also may recognize it from my Beyond Paint video because it goes with this piece, but I don't have a use for it. So I wanted to do something really fun with it. And I wanted to give you a little tour of my Festool Rotex 90. You guys have seen this in other videos and you wanted more details on it. So I'm gonna be talking about it a little bit today and using it to strip the paint off the top of this nightstand. So this top box is actually what the sander comes in and this bottom portion is a dust extractor. So the hose folds up nice and easy in here when you're not working with it. And this is what the vacuum and the vacuum bag looks like. The dust extractor is also on wheels and the sander clips on top. So it's really easy to move around my project I'm working on. I'm gonna use a 60 grit pad in Rotex mode to strip off this paint. It also has a speed variation on the side, which is nice because you can control um, the tempo that your sander is going. Since I'm stripping finish off, I wanna stay around a four or a five or a six. As long as the dust extractor is turned on every time I turn my sander on, it kicks on and it sucks up all the dust. It's really, close to dustless sanding, which is amazing because I've used just a regular bargain DeWalt orbital sander for a long time and it kicks up so much dust and makes such a big mess. 
in my garage and it definitely does not strip this fast. You guys can see how quickly this is eating through three layers of paint and three layers of top coat and taking me down to bare wood. Okay, here is the hard news. The sander costs $475 and the dust extractor costs $640. So this is not a DIY tool. This is a tool for furniture refinishers who do this as a business. This is a huge investment. I paid for this with my own money and it was really hard to do, but it is saving me so much time. And the specific reason I picked this model is because of that attachment right there. It can also go into Delta mode and you can get really detailed sanding. So those are my thoughts on the Festool 90. I did have some paint in the cracks still. I tried to get this paint out of these cracks just using sandpaper and it was not working. So I had to go to my dreaded stripper. You guys, I should not have pushed this paint into the seams when I knew that I was just gonna strip it down the road, but I wanted that top coat video to be very authentic. So here I am just applying some citrus strip. I'm gonna let this set for 30 minutes and then I'm gonna come back in and strip that remaining paint out of the cracks of this top. And during those 30 minutes, I decided to strip off these little decorative pieces just like I did on the bigger dresser for the Beyond Paint video. I'm also removing the hardware and saving that for later. So I'm just using a painter's tool on the little pointy end to strip out this paint. And I also grabbed a little brass brush to get out any little bits stuck in there. After I'm done stripping the paint, I'm just taking this low odor mineral spirits and some coarse steel wool and I'm cleaning off all that stripper. Then I'm taking my sander and I'm putting it in orbital mode and I think I have like a 220 on here and I am sanding back my wood filler. My next step for prep is I'm going to be cleaning this whole piece with some Dixie Bell White Lightning, which is a TSB cleaner. You just mix this up with hot water and scrub really well with a scrubby sponge. And then I always come back in with some clean, clear water and rinse everything off. I'm also going to add some primer to these spots where I added my wood filler. The last thing I'm tackling on day one of this project is getting this hardware all painted and ready to go so that it's cured and hard on the last day of the project. So I'm just cleaning it off with a degreaser. Then I'm gonna rinse it with some water, dry them off, and then give them a scuff sand with a 220 sandpaper. And then I'm gonna be using my favorite spray paint that you see me use on my channel all the time. I love this Rust-Oleum primer and paint in one with a metallic finish. It gives a real metal finish and I like to reuse hardware when I can because it saves money. When I'm working with spray paint, I find it's best to do multiple thin coats and you don't have to wait very long in between coats, just about five minutes or so. So I've let my top dry overnight and my primer is dry too. So I'm just sanding this with a fine sanding paper. And then I'm going back over my top with a 150 sandpaper to start. And then I bumped it up to 220 just to make it nice and smooth. And I'm getting all that dust off before I start painting. I'm gonna be trying out a new paint today. You guys have recommended this to me over and over again, and I'm finally trying it. This is Fusion Mineral Paint, and I'm using the color Bayberry, which is a really beautiful olive green. This is a self-leveling acrylic paint, so I am going to be using some zebra brushes today because they're synthetic, and it's gonna help even more alleviate those brush marks. I want to clarify that this is not a chalk paint, so pretty different from a lot of the paints that you see me use on my channel. This is 100% acrylic and all their pigments are natural, so they don't use any synthetic pigments and it's going to cure down after 21 days and be really hard and you don't have to top coat it. 
like I mentioned, this is the first time I'm using this paint. So I went to Fusion's website and it's super helpful. It has lots of information about how their paint is made and they have tons of YouTube videos showing how to use it. So I watched a lot of those demos and they were really helpful. Some of the tips that I found helpful is that you do want to use a lot more paint than you're used to. That's just the best way to use this paint is get a lot on your brush and kind of push it across your entire piece. I found the open time on it is a little bit longer than a chalk style paint. It doesn't dry as quickly, so it gives you some time to go back in there and smooth out your brush strokes. You don't want to do a lot of back brushing and you don't want to stop in the middle of the stroke. And if you do, you want to do one of those long strokes all the way from the top to the bottom. Like I mentioned earlier, this paint is 100% acrylic. It is water-based, but you may have noticed I did not pull out my spray bottle. I did not water down my brush. This paint does not need to be watered down at all. It just works straight out of the can, which is really nice. This is a zero VOC paint, so you can definitely work with it indoors. And it's actually free of a lot of chemicals that you're going to find in other paints like ammonia and formaldehyde. Another way it's different from chalk paint is that it is not porous at all because it's acrylic. Those chalk paints really soak up wax and soak up top coats. And this is actually going to harden down and you don't have to top coat it, but for extra durability, they do have um, a clear coat that you can use that's non-yellowing and they do have a finishing oil if you want to put that on darker colors. And they have a lot of different colored waxes if you're just wanting to do embellishment, but I wanted to do it nice and easy today. So I'm not doing embellishments today. I'm just doing a smooth finish and I am not going to be top coating today. The pint I'm working out of today retails for around $20. You can find your closest retailer by going to their website and seeing who sells it in your area. Some of those retailers do sell online and I did find some on Amazon, but the shipping was pretty expensive on it. I'm gonna do two coats on this, so I'm gonna let this first coat dry for about two hours before I come back and recoat. I'm cleaning my lid off before I close this up so it doesn't get stuck on there. And I'm also gonna wrap my brushes in cling wrap so I can just come back and use them. Here is what my paint looks like after it's dry. It does really level out as it's drying and I just needed a little bit more coverage so I'm gonna put a second coat on. love that this paint comes in pint sizes because that's really all you need to do like a dresser is a pint as you can see I only probably use like a quarter of this on this end table so while that's drying I'm going to seal my top and I'm going to use my Dixie Belle clear coat flat and I'm going to be trying out the zebra fan brush today I have lots of furniture painter friends that rave about this brush for applying top coat so I'm going to be checking it out today you guys have seen this on my channel so much, but in case you're new here, I love this top coat. It is super flat. It applies really easily. It's self-leveling. It works over paint or over um, stain or over wood. I recently used this on my son's desk and I've used it on his dresser before and I really like the finish it gives over bare wood. So 
So my hardware is all dry and ready to apply. So who is ready for the big reveal? Just to remind you, here is what we started off with. And here is my fall end table nightstand makeover. I love this color. I love the gold accent and how it just really feels like a fall piece. I really enjoyed working with this fusion mineral paint. I think I will definitely be trying it on another project in the future. I like this piece so much that I have put it in the family room so I can enjoy it during the fall season. Thank you guys for joining me for today's project. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gets you ready for fall. Don't forget to check out my course that is launching with International Open Academy and get that great deal before it ends on October 5th. I will be back next week with another project and I will be 40 when I see you next time. <laughs> Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time. <laughs> oh, hi. What do you need? Oh, sure, that'd be excellent. I love Chipotle. Your wallet's in that drawer, I put it away. You can walk through, it's fine. Go on, walk right through. I'm gonna put that booty on my uh, bloopers to get me more views. Bye. Love you. <laughs>